Welcome back to Tank Week, and today we'll take a look at this guy. Man the autocannons, because we're looking at the Space Marine Stalker. Hello again, and welcome back to Auspets Tactics, where we're continuing our look at the armoured forces of the Space Marines. We covered the Hunter yesterday, and that nasty, nasty missile launcher. So today, let's move on to the Space Marine Stalker, the equivalent that is equipped with some very big, scary autocannons ready to scour those filthy Xenos flyers from the sky. In this video we'll take a look at the Stalker's rules and weapons profile, any ways that we can buff it to become an even stronger threat on the tabletop, and how I would field these flat tanks on the battlefield. The Stalker's signature ability is that it has two independently firing Icarus Storm cannons, each controlled by its own independent servitor, so it can follow two different aircraft at once, or Combine fire on a suitably large target. The Iron Hands in particular are famed for using their stalkers because they approve of the mechanical data targeting ability rather than relying on any individual person, as is often their way. So let's get into the model's rules then. The stalker is a heavy support choice for Codex Space Marines. It is a single tank armed with two Icarus Storm Cannons. It's got a movement of 10, Weapon skill of 6 up, ballistic skill of 3 up, strength 6, toughness 8, so very tanky, wounds 11, 3 attacks, leadership 8, and a 3 up save. It has a degrading profile that gets worse when you reach 5 wounds and then 2 wounds, where its movement will drop from 10 to 5 and then 5 to 3, and its ballistic skill will get worse from 3 up to 4 up to 5 up, much like any other Space Marine vehicle. With no upgrades, the Stalker costs you 95 points, which is a respectably cheap price tag for all of those toughness 8 wounds, plus a decent amount of damage output. So let's talk about those Icarus Storm Cannons. They have a 48 inch range, heavy 3, so, and there's 2 of them, so that's 6 of these shots. Strength 7, AP minus 1, which will be minus 2 if it's in the Devastator Doctrine, and a flat damage of 2. They get plus 1 to hit if you're targeting something that can fly, but must subtract 1 from their hit roll if they are targeting something that can't fly. Due to that minus 1 to hit when targeting non-flyers, this means the Stalker is a lot more of a specialised unit than the Hunter that we talked about in the video before was. They'll only be hitting on 4s when they're targeting ground-based targets, which means only 3 of those autocannon shots are likely to connect each turn. It has a couple of extra options that you can choose to take with it, including a Storm Bolter, which I'd always pay for as 2 points for 4 shots at 24 inches isn't a bad deal at all, and a Hunter Killer Missile, which I would strongly consider taking if I was either using Master Artisans, the Salamander's trait, or if I was thinking of putting this guy next to some buffing characters such as Captains, Chapter Masters or Lieutenants. The Hunter Killer Missile costs 6 points. It has the Angels of Death rule, which can be particularly useful for putting it in the Devastator Doctrine, as going from AP-1 on those Storm Cannons to AP-2 is quite a big jump. It might explode when it's destroyed, and if you roll a 6 when it dies, then any unit within 6 inches suffers D6 mortal wounds, and it also has Smoke Launchers, which allow you to forego shooting to get an extra minus 1 to hit in your opponent's turn. So now we've covered the unit's stats, what combos will help it on the battlefield. Starting with chapter traits, this is very similar to my previous video about the Hunter. Iron Hands will help any vehicle due to 6 up feel no pain, better overwatch which is quite good with all of these storm cannon shots, and degrading a lot slower than normal. If your arm is pure Iron Hands, then this can move and shoot and reroll ones with its storm cannons, which are both very nice bonuses indeed, and can turn this tank from a static gunline tank into a very mobile fire support unit. Ultramarines, again, is good because of being able to move and shoot in the Tactical Doctrine. Raven Guard or Stealthy can give it a 2-up save due to being in cover when the enemy is shooting more than 12 inches away. And either Salamanders or Master Artisans is certainly a good pick, allowing you to roll a nice strong Storm Cannon shot, or potentially the hit or wound rolls for that Hunter Killer missile. Again, we're still looking forward to seeing what the Imperial Fist and Crimson Fist's Super Doctrine is, so this could certainly be worth considering, as I bet it's going to be something to do with the Devastator Doctrine. Unlike the Hunter, the Stalker can, can really benefit from character support, particularly this thing just loves to be in the aura of a Chapter Master. 
because it only hits on 4s against ground targets, having a chapter master be able to give it 4 rerolls is actually a very decent buff to its damage output. A squadron of 3 of these with no chapter master shooting at ground targets will hit 9 storm cannon shots on average, but when they do have a chapter master nearby, they'll hit 13.5 storm cannon shots per turn, which is really quite significant. If you could manage to cluster three of these and perhaps another stronger shooting unit next to a chapter master, you could be getting a serious amount of value out of your chapter master investment. Another good pick is Iron Father Pharos out of the Iron Hands. He's a strong choice to run alongside any vehicles due to being able to give one a boosted ballistic skill and healing one for a significant amount of wounds per turn. Again, like the Hunter, the main stratagem that I'd consider for this unit is the Skyfire stratagem. And I believe that the Stalker gets a lot more out of the stratagem than the Hunter does due to the guns being lower strength, so a plus one to wound is actually a lot more valuable. They'll also more consistently trigger the six to wound, giving double damage to that particular shot. On average, when in Devastated Doctrine, these guys do 1.8 wounds to your typical toughness six minus one to hit flyer, leading to an average of 3.5 damage. This is significantly better than the Hunter at the same roll, which on average does about two wounds to the same target. This really jumps up a lot though when you use the Skyfire stratagem. On the Hunter it doesn't actually make that much difference, it adds about 1.5 damage on, but when used on the Stalker, a Stalk with Skyfire will do an average of seven wounds to that typical Toughness 6 minus one to hit flyer. So that's one CP to on average inflict another three and a half wounds. That is actually very good indeed and worth doing if you want to pile on a bit of extra damage. And that of course could be even stronger if you have a captain or lieutenant to buff it. This thing does legitimate amounts of damage to the targets it's supposed to, i.e. flyers, which is quite nice to see really. As Games Workshop has a bit of a history of writing anti-air units rules that aren't actually that good at shooting down flyers such as, say, the Guard Hydra. So how would I optimise a Stalker for use on the battlefield? i certainly consider either the Iron Hands trait, or either Master Artisans or Stealthy from the successor chapter options, for the reasons we've already discussed. If I was running multiple of these in a list, I would certainly think about having a Captain nearby to re-roll the ones, and have the option of upgrading him to a Chapter Master with 2 CP before the battle, if there are no air targets to fire at. I would always take the Storm Bolter for an extra 2 points, and strongly consider taking the Hunter Killer Missile if I was either buffing these guys with Chapter Masters, or if I had access to Master Artisans. In game, I'd want to deploy them at the back of the board, or just within 48 inch range of flyers, to ensure that I had decent targets. I want to screen these guys with plenty of infantry or other scary threats to ensure that the enemy doesn't manage to get some infantry in close combat with the unit and make it useless by locking it up. As I said before, I'd certainly consider castling around a captain or chapter master to optimise the amount of damage coming out of those storm cannons and just lay into the enemy flyers and then any other targets of opportunity. Being 2 damage, strength 7, AP minus 2 guns, they're actually pretty good against virtually anything they turn their attention to while just being super good against flyers. If I was going second, I'd certainly consider using prepared positions to give them an extra pip of cover safe to make it harder for the enemy to kill them turn one, particularly if they were flyer heavy. If I was taking one stalker, I'd most certainly consider taking multiple stalkers, because if you have an enemy with a lot of flyers, they are going to prioritise the removal of things that are amazing against flyers. So if they get first turn, they might just kill your one stalker turn one, and you never get to fire any stalkers at the flyers. If you take three, then maybe they can kill one, but they can't kill any more, so you still get to unleash two stalkers on them in your first turn. Overall, I'd rate the stalker as a decently competitive unit, and I could see good reasons for taking these in any Space Marine list. They're somewhat meta-dependent, so they'll excel in an area where you see lots of people using flyers, but if you run into a lot of players that use no flyers, then they won't be as good. I could certainly see matchups where the extra 20 points that Stalkers cost over Hunters being worth it, and certainly see some matchups when you prefer to just have paid for the Hunters. So I think they are well internally balanced with their other anti air counterparts.
Tomorrow in Tank Week we'll be taking a look at the Vindicator, so please feel free to subscribe if you'd like to see that video. I've been enjoying using my Vindicator recently, as it's suddenly acquired a whole load of extra shots against any target. As always, if I've missed anything, or if I've got any rules wrong, let me know down in the comments below. And thank you for watching All Specs Tactics. I'll see you guys in the next video.